Good evening, visitors, and welcome to the Australian War Memorial's last post ceremony. My name is Jared Pratt, and joining us today from the Royal Australian Navy is Lieutenant Commander Nathan Lewis. We warmly welcome the family of Lieutenant Paul John Kimlin, whose story will be told shortly. Tonight, we are honoured to acknowledge Vice Admiral Michael Noonan, Chief of Navy, Warrant Officer of the Navy, Deb Butterworth, Warrant Officer Navy, Commander Don Desenger, Commander Fleet Air Arm, Mr. Dennis Lyons, representing the Naval Association of Australia, Mrs. Sharon Bown, National Vice President, Air Force Association, and representatives from the Lynham High School. As always, we welcome the veterans who have served, those that are still serving, and the families that love and support them. We acknowledge the members of RSL and Services Clubs Association, RSL Victoria and RSL Queensland, who are watching the broadcast of this ceremony from across Australia. During this evening's ceremony, wreaths will be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection by families and visitors to the memorial. If able, please stand and join in singing the national anthem. Fable, please be seated. The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's First World War official historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli and stayed with them at the front through until the end of the war. The idea of this national memorial and museum came to him at Pozier, France in the depths of the bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where families and friends could mourn loved ones buried in faraway places. It would also be a place that could help all Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they had done for us. Bean's vision, to which we remain true, is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance to the memorial's galleries. Here is their spirit in the heart of the land they loved, and here we guard the record which they themselves made. Tonight, we will read the story behind just one of those on the Roll of Honour, which lists the names of more than 102,000 men and women who have given their lives for us in war and on operations for more than a century. But first, we present a lament, Flowers of the Forest. Wreaths or floral tributes will now be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection.
Today we remember and pay tribute to Lieutenant Paul John Kimlin. Paul Kimlin was born on the 1st of January 1976 in Canberra, the son of Ray and Carol Kimlin. Paul and his older sister Janelle grew up in Canberra, part of a close-knit family. He attended Melbourne Primary School, where his lifelong love of aircraft and flying manifested. While other children read adventure novels, Paul collected and read aircraft magazines. The dream to become a pilot only grew with time. Paul attended Lynham High School and then Copeland College. He joined the Air Cadets at the age of 14 and took part in as many of the flying camps and other activities as he could, further fueling his dream of becoming a military aviator. In 1995, Paul applied to join the Royal Australian Air Force as a pilot. Though he was unsuccessful, he was deemed suitable to fly helicopters. Undeterred, he began an applied science degree at Canberra University, but hadn't progressed too far when the Royal Australian Navy approached him and asked him to join as a direct entry pilot to fly helicopters. Paul entered the RAN in March 1996 and was posted to the Royal Australian Naval College at HMAS Creswell. After graduating in August, he was posted to RAF Base Pierce for pilot training. Successfully completing this course in February 1998, he was posted back to Canberra for training at the Australian Defence Force Helicopter School at RAF Base Fairburn. Paul was awarded his wings in November and was posted to 723 Squadron at HMAS Albatross for helicopter training. In September 2000, Paul deployed to East Timor where he served as the Military Aviation Liaison Officer to the United Nations Transitional Administration East Timor. After returning from this deployment, he was posted to 817 Squadron for type conversion to fly Sea King helicopters. His next deployment was to Christmas Island in 2002 as part of Operation Relics, part of Australia's wider border protection operations. In March 2003, Paul deployed to Iraq as part of the crew of HMAS Canimbla flying a Sea King helicopter. While in Iraq, he flew fleet and combat support missions, maintaining part of the logistics lifeline to ships in the Northern Arabian Gulf and land-based Australian forces. His helicopter, Shark 07, was the first RAN aircraft to land in Iraq after hostilities had begun. By the early 2000s, Paul had become one of the new veterans' public faces of the Royal Australian Navy. He appeared on television, including the Anzac Day 2004 edition of Enough Rope with Andrew Denton, represented the RAN at Omen Days and took part in public talks and school visits. In December 2004, Paul and his Canimbla crewmates were called to participate in Operation Sumatra Assist, the Australian humanitarian response to the 2004 Boxing Day tsunami. The tsunami, one of the largest on record, resulted in the death of an estimated 230,000 people from 14 countries bordering the Indian Ocean. Over 1,400 members of the Australian Defence Force took part in the massive international humanitarian response to the disaster. Canimbla arrived in Banda Arche in Indonesia on the 13th of January and immediately began assisting in the relief effort. Australians assisted in the aftermath of the tsunami by providing medical, transport and engineering support and by providing tonnes of humanitarian supplies, such as food, water and fuel. In March 2005, Canimbla was docked in Singapore preparing to return to Australia. On 28th of March, an earthquake struck off the coast of the Indonesian island of Nias. This earthquake did not cause a tsunami, but caused widespread destruction of buildings, roads, bridges and other infrastructure. Roughly one third of the buildings in the island's main urban centres were destroyed. Official reports listed 850 people were killed and more than 6,000 injured. 
Canimbla was immediately deployed to the island to provide medical and transport support in what became known as Operation Sumatra Assist 2. As a, as a result of the widespread damage to the roads of Nias, urgently needed medical support could not reach remote areas. So Canimbla deployed one of its helicopters, a Sea King designated Shark 02, to deliver medical teams and humanitarian stores to the island. On the afternoon of the 2nd of April 2005, Shark 02 flew towards Nias with its regular crew of four. Paul was captain of the aircraft along with seven medical and communications specialists. They reached the village of Tuandreo on the island's west coast and prepared to make a landing on the local football pitch. As the air helicopter approached its landing, it suddenly pitched forwards, causing the nose to strike the ground. The helicopter flipped onto its back, fell to its side and burst into flames. Two badly injured personnel were pulled from the flaming wreckage by local Indonesians Nine other personnel, including Lieutenant Kimlin, were killed in the tragic accident. Paul Kimlin was 29 years old. On the 5th of April, during a state visit to Australia, Indonesian President Susulu Bambang Yudiono posthumously awarded Paul and the eight other crew and passengers of Shark 02 the Indonesian Medal of Valor. A later court of inquiry determined that the crash had been caused by a mechanical fault. Paul Kimlin's name is listed on the roll of honour on my left, along with the other eight servicemen and servicewomen who died during Operation Sumatra Assist 2. His photograph is displayed today beside the pool of reflection. He is but one of the many stories of service and sacrifice told here at the Australian War Memorial. We now remember Lieutenant Paul John Kimlin, who gave his life for us, for our freedoms, and in the hope of a better world. Please stand for the reading of the ode and the sounding of the last post. They have no grave but the cruel sea, no flowers lay at their head. A rusting hulk is their tombstone, a fast on the ocean bed. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Lest we forget. Lest we forget.
We leave you this evening with the words of the memorial's founder, Charles Bean. Many a man lying out there at Pozier, or on the low scrub at Gallipoli, with his poor, tired senses belly working through the fever of his brain, has thought in his last moments, well, well, it's over. But in Australia, they will be proud of this. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, that concludes the last post ceremony. We thank you all for visiting the Australian War Memorial and wish you all a very good evening. Thank you.